Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a snow covered candy cane text effect for the holidays. Let's get started. So here's our document which is 1920 by 1080. The first thing that I want to do is fill the background with a bluish gray color. So I'm going to choose my foreground color and the color we're using is going to be AAB8C5. Then I'll select my paint bucket tool and fill my layer. Next, I'm going to double click that layer to open the layer style dialog and add a gradient overlay. I'm going to set the blend mode to soft light, change the angle to 125 degrees, and set the opacity to 35% and hit OK. And that's just going to add a subtle gradient effect on our background. Next, I'm going to come over and select my pen tool. I'm going to create a snowy hill landscape on the background of my image. Next, I'm going to double click that layer in the layers palette to open the layer style dialog and add another gradient overlay. I'm going to click on the gradient and I want it to be white on one end and on the other end I'm going to use the color D2D7DD and hit OK. Next, I'm going to add an outer glow and I'm going to set the blend mode to screen, the opacity to 65%, the noise to 50%, and increase the size to 21 pixels and hit OK. And that's going to make it look kind of like dusty snow is coming off of my landscape. Next, I'm going to bring in this marble texture, which you can find in the project files. And I'm going to scale it up to cover my entire image. Then I'm going to press Ctrl A to select my entire document, then Ctrl C and Ctrl V to paste just that selection. Now I can delete the marble layer that I dragged in and then I'll change the blend mode of my cropped marble layer to overlay and set the opacity to 15%. And that's going to give us kind of a nice ice texture on our background. Next, I'm going to add our Merry Christmas text. So first, I'm going to change the foreground color to a medium gray and then select my text tool and type Merry Christmas. And I'm just going to scale that up and center it in my image. Next, we're going to create our red stripe pattern. So I'm going to press Ctrl N to create a new document, and I'm going to make that 200 square pixels and hit OK. First, I'll fill the background layer with white. Then I'm going to drag out from my rulers into the middle of my image so I know where the center is. Next, I'll change my foreground color to red. And with my rectangle tool using shape up here, I'm going to click on my document and create a stripe that's 75 pixels by 200 pixels. Then with the move tool, I'm going to snap it into place in the middle of my image. Next, I'll click one of these handles and while I hold Alt, I'm going to drag it to make it taller. And by holding Alt, it's also going to make it extend at the bottom too. Then I'm going to hold Shift and rotate that stripe 45 degrees and hit Enter. I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate my stripe and then I'm going to come over and choose my path selection tool. I'm going to right click on that stripe and choose free transform path. Then I'm going to click on my stripe and drag it up until the center point of my stripe snaps into place in the top left corner of my canvas. Then I'll just hit enter. Again, I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate that stripe. Right click and enter free transform mode and drag that stripe down until the center point snaps to the bottom right corner of my canvas and hit enter. Now all I have to do is choose edit, define pattern and give it the name stripes and hit OK. You don't have to save this document if you don't want to. Next, I'm going to double click my Merry Christmas text in the Layers palette to open the Layer Style dialog and come down and give it a pattern overlay. When I go into my patterns, you'll see the red and white stripe pattern that we just created. I'm going to change the scale of that pattern to 50% and then add the rest of my effects to make it look more 3D. So first, I'm going to come up to Bevel and Emboss and I want the style set to inner bevel and I'm going to increase the depth to 125%. Then I'm going to set the size to 21 pixels, the angle to 125 degrees, and the vertical angle to 63 degrees. For my gloss contour, I'm going to click this down arrow and choose inverted cone. And then I'm going to set the color for both my highlights and shadows to white. I want the highlight mode and the shadow mode to be set to linear dodge and the highlight opacity is going to be 65% percent 
while the shadow opacity is going to be 55%. Next, I'm going to add an inner shadow, and I want the blend mode for that set to linear burn using the color black. Then I'll set the opacity to 50%, uncheck use global light, and set the angle to negative 30 degrees. And finally, change the distance to 12 pixels and the size to 75 pixels. And you can already see that our text is looking nice and shiny. Next, I'm going to add an inner glow and make sure the blend mode is set to linear burn. Then I'm going to change the opacity to 25%, the choke to 12%, and the size to 28 pixels. I'm also going to set my range to 65%. Next, I'll add a satin effect. And I'm going to change the blend mode for that to linear burn also using the color black. Then I'll set the opacity to 15%, leave the angle at 19 degrees, and then I'll change the distance to 215 pixels and the size to 88 pixels. You want to make sure that invert is checked and that you're using the Gaussian gloss contour. Lastly, I'm going to give it a drop shadow. Again, I want the blend mode set to linear burn using the color black. And then I'm going to set the opacity to 40%, the distance to 5 pixels, and the size to 15 pixels, and hit OK. Next, I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate my text, and right click it in the Layers palette, and choose Clear Layer Style. I'm going to change the color of this text to the hex code of all E's, and hit OK. And then I'm going to come up and choose Layer, Vector Mask, Reveal All. Next, I'm going to select my pen tool and make sure that I have path selected up here and click on my vector mask. Now I'm going to zoom in and what I'm going to do with my pen tool is draw little shapes where I want the snow to show up on my text. So all you have to do is draw the snow and you'll see that once you create closed shapes that it looks like realistic snow showing up on your text. This part is a little tedious, but it's really what makes this effect worthwhile. You want to make sure that you get all the surfaces of your text that would be covered with snow, so not just the top, but also anything that's a horizontal stroke. Once you have all your vector shapes selected, you can zoom out and choose the Move tool and click on your document to hide those paths. Next, we're going to add a style to all of those paths to make it look like real snow. So I'm going to double click that layer in the Layers palette to open the Layer Style dialog, and I'm going to add a bevel and emboss effect. So I want the style set to inner bevel and the depth set to 100%. Then I'm going to set the size to 10 pixels, soft inset to 1 pixel. Then I'm going to uncheck Use Global Light and set my vertical angle to 40 degrees. I'm going to set the highlight mode to screen and the highlight opacity to 75%. Then I'm going to set the shadow blend mode to multiply and set that to 50%. Next, I'm going to give it an outer glow and I'm going to set the blend mode to screen the opacity to 50%, and the noise to 50%, and then I'm going to set the size to 5 pixels. Lastly, we're going to give this a drop shadow as well. I want the blend mode set to linear burn, the opacity set to 30%, the distance set to 4 pixels, and the size set to 10 pixels. And that's it for our snow effect, so I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hold Alt and click this up arrow to collapse all my layer styles. And then I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer to my entire document. I'm going to drag the center of this curve up a bit to brighten my whole image. And then on the layer mask for my curves adjustment layer, I'm going to paint black in the middle so this lightning effect only happens to the edges of my image. So with my layer mask selected, I'm going to press B to select the brush tool. And using the color black, I'm going to paint in the middle of my image. Now you can see if I turn that curves adjustment layer on and off that it brightens up just the edges of my image. Lastly, I'm going to add some final text to my image down here at the bottom.
I'm going to give it the same color as our original background, which again was AAB8C5. I'm going to drag that text layer under my texture layer to make sure that that texture applies to the text as well. You can use this same technique to create something like colored liquid inside of glass letters and other cool text effects. You can download the project files to see how everything was put together and copy the layer styles used in this video. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.